guys and welcome back. Today I'm working with a new medium and I'm trying out a new technique. So these are some things that I've been really wanting to figure out and get better at and work on. So I'll be mentioning a few points that if you've watched much of my other videos, you'll know that I've been thinking about them a while now and I'm trying to incorporate new ways of learning. But I can talk a little bit about the technique that I'm doing that I am trying to incorporate more. And I've been wanting to work looser. I've been wanting to be able to incorporate things as I'm painting them in a way that I can feel a lot more spontaneous with it and more connected with the process rather than being very nailed into a box from the very beginning. Because normally I rely very heavily on having very solid concrete line work and I love line work. So it's not the line work itself that I feel like is trapping me. It's more the fact that once I have that there, I can no longer add things and incorporate new things, especially with watercolor because it's transparent. I can't layer new opaque things on top of it. And I know that there are options, there's gouache and many other things, many other ways to get that effect. But I've been wanting to find a way to make my process a little bit more natural as far as being loose with it. So it's something that I want to bridge the gap without completely leaving the realm of the type of art that I like to create. So just long story short, um, I started off this piece, as you may be able to see, it's very, very faint, but I started off rather than transferring it with line work, I took my sketch and I transferred it over with a very light gray colored pencil. And I'm using a very thin colored pencil, which is perfect because it's not going to smudge and blend in with the ink that I end up using to paint this, it won't do that like normal graphite pencil and it's not gonna be brightly colored or very noticeable like Coley Race, which I have used in the past. So this is just very subtle. It's dark enough that I can see it and I can figure out where I want to fill things in, but if there's areas that I don't want them to be there anymore, I can cover them up, which there were some details that I did end up covering up and they completely disappeared which is perfect because it does mean that I can incorporate line work, I can refine things, but I don't have to be nailed down to that original idea that I had. And this was really actually a very exciting point. And I, uh, it seems pretty obvious once I did do it, but it's something that I hadn't really thought about or thought about needing to address. But starting off with such a light sketch when I'm working on this did really free me up to be able to be a lot more spontaneous with the types of brush strokes. And a little bit about the new medium that I'm using today. It's very, very similar to what I normally use and I normally use watercolors, but today I'm using acrylic inks and I've done a lot of research on these before I got them and they can be used very similar to watercolors. In fact, they have a little list on the box that I bought that has different techniques you can use and it has watercolors right there. So what you can do is you can thin these down and create washes and glazes very similar to watercolors. But the big difference is that these are waterproof. So as soon as they're dry, they are locked in there. And it's interesting how this very small detail, how much it changes the way that I think about a painting. Because when I'm doing watercolors, I don't really think a lot about the layers below it being slightly water soluble still, but it does affect how much I scrub at it or how many layers because some paints are much more water soluble. They will fade if I really scrub at it and others can be more staining, but overall they're still reactivated with water. So these inks are not, and I'm interested to see how that will change the way that I process them and how I work with them. And right now I'm still very much stuck in a mindset of watercolors, so I don't really know how to incorporate that yet, but I am excited about the end. The fact that I can create line work that will be waterproof, it means that I can build it up. I can do line work that is the same color as the object or an interesting color rather than just going in with black. So there's a lot more options of being able to know that the layers that I'm putting down there are going to stay. Whereas if I did line work with watercolor in watercolors, the more glazing and washes that I did, the more those lines would erode. And I know that that would be really frustrating for me because I have tried it, but knowing that these will be there and they're solid and reliable, I think will be very exciting and really bring in a lot of life to the line work. And that's really why I wanted to make sure that I started with a very, very light sketch at the beginning, because that way I could incorporate the line work as I was creating it. And I could really tailor it to the color that I wanted it to be and the way that I wanted it to interact with the environment. And it can be something that builds up with the rest of the painting 
as it's progressing rather than being something set in stone from the very beginning, like I talked about. And I was a little bit surprised at the subtle differences that happened when I was painting with these, the different ways that it felt, because it does seem like it should behave pretty much exactly like watercolor. At least that was kind of the thought that I had before I started it. But there are some very subtle differences. I noticed that when I created very nice luscious washes, sometimes I would get where the pigment in that wash would gather to the edges of that water. So when it dried down, there would be a line around that wash. And I actually really liked that. I think that it added some interesting texture to it. And that's something that I hadn't really seen in watercolor. I'm sure that you can see it in watercolor and I'm absolutely sure that there's ways that I could probably avoid it with these ink washes, but it was new to me and I thought that was kind of cool. It was accidental. In some areas I was like, oh, that isn't really where I want it, where it happened around her face, where there was like this line that was following along her nose and then it cut in a little bit. But those are areas that I was able to cover up with more washes of this rosy red color. And that was definitely the benefit of going in with lighter washes and building them up because I didn't know how dark it would be, how it would interact with itself. So the fact that I started much lighter and was able to build it up definitely saved a few areas like that. But yeah, that was interesting. I got that interesting texture there. It also felt like it was bleeding a lot more than watercolors. And I don't know if this was factual or the fact that I started off with much lighter line work, but it did feel like it was leaving the areas that I initially put it down and it was feathering out. And this is watercolor paper that I've used a ton. I pretty much always use this Arches watercolor paper. So I don't think it was the paper, but I could also be wrong because this is a new pad of that same watercolor paper. So I don't know. It wasn't upsetting. It was interesting. It added new texture and I enjoyed that, but I will definitely be doing a few more tests to figure out if it's something that I was doing and I can tailor the way that I am using these to get more of a precise result. Or I don't know. I, I think that it's definitely something that I'll test out and I'll see and try to get to the root of the cause of it. And while I was painting her tail, I knew that I wanted to leave it pretty much lineless. I wanted it to be very expressive and soft compared to some of the areas on her torso and her skin, especially around her face area where it was going to be very well defined with line work. And I really like being able to have things that are not completely defined and perfectly outlined because it can be a tool that can be used very usefully for creating depth. So for this, it's all pretty close to the viewer, but if I wanted to create something that was much farther into the background, being able to have it much looser and softer and easier means that it'll have depth to it. So I can have areas where maybe it's right up close to the camera or the plane of view, and that can be very detailed and clean and sharp and everything beyond it can be very blurred out and soft and hazy. And even not just for pushing a certain kind of depth to the piece, I would really like to try out doing things where I have really tight, refined areas and other areas that are left much looser. I've done research on different types of paintings and artwork that I am excited about and interested in, and I'd like to learn from some of those things. And some of those paintings that I particularly love and I really respond to are really refined in some areas, very clean, they're very well rendered and then other areas are very expressive. And I think that that would be able to incorporate multiple levels to a piece that I would like to have. And that is it for today. As usual, I do have the original of her available. So if you'd like to own this painting, I've got a link in the description as well as in the end card. And I have prints of her available as well in the five by seven size. And I think the thing that I loved the most about this process was discovering that light gray pencil. I think it's gonna open up a lot of doors as far as being able to be more spontaneous with the line work and with pretty much all of the brush strokes. So I think that's the key to me being able to feel controlled, but still have that look. But yeah, I post every Wednesdays and Saturdays, all art related. So I will see you guys at my next video. Thanks for watching.